curled a little bit. You can try to use the book to get caught up. We're on page 2 dash 8. If you get stuck, let me know. And I'll try to hopefully you can resolve things. Um, all right, we do have a lot of ground to cover this, but I do want to try to get through this. What I want to start off doing is a new report, and I want to use, a, use the report wizard, um, which is the easiest way to create a report. There is a link right here. You can click on that. That's one way to get into the report using the wizard. Or what we show you in the book is you can click on File, New, and then New Using Wizard. Either one will bring you to the same place. Um, so, no, no issues there. Click on New Using Wizard. And we've got that little, I don't know what that is. I think that's a spinning coin or something. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be. Uh, but that's telling us that it's trying to bring up the application and surface it into our browser. Um, we did have some network issues yesterday. Uh, and you know, go as fast as we would have liked them. Um, so, I'm going to blame these, some of these, uh, some of this moment on our um, All right, and then what we're going to do once we get in here is we are going to create a report. And one thing to keep in mind is that we're on a, we're in a browser, and we're creating a report from a browser um, that we'll be able to look at later and that other users can share with you and potentially share with other users. If and when um, this application is start. Anybody else? Well, there goes mine. Yeah, I'm still waiting. I think one of the problems, too, is when we all try to get to it at the exact same time, um, it's like we're all making, we're all asking for data. To data uh, download simultaneously, and these blades are in North Carolina, uh, the distance distance really shouldn't matter, but um, they think they the New York officer needs to upgrade their, uh, their network line or something. In any case, um, did you get this? Did you get this part? Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to click on select data source, because there is no data selected. So I'll click on the select data source, and this will show me the data from that is available to me on the metadata server. All right. So this is data that has been registered to the metadata server. We're going to we're working for Chocolate Enterprises. So I'm going to expand Chocolate Enterprises, and I'm going to expand data. I'm just going to click on a plus sign to expand those folders, and. You guys have sales data in there? Oh, I'm sorry. I was in the wrong place. I'm just waiting for something bad to happen. I think it's a problem. Okay, when it, it took so long to come up, I'm thinking, okay, I hope everything's all right here. All right, thank you. Um, okay, the so open information map. Um, what an information map is, we don't really spend a lot of time explaining these, but if you're familiar with views, like an SQL view, it's the same idea. And basically what that is, is it's a, an object that doesn't contain data, it points to data. So when I reference an information map, it's pulling data from one or more tables. And when we created that information map, we did some formatting of the data, um, we did some grouping of the data, so some things are happening behind the scenes for us to surface the data in, in a nicer way. It makes it easier for users um, so that they don't have to do their own joins and that kind of thing. All right? So I'm going to select, under information maps, I'm going to select Chocolate Enterprises Sales Data. All right? And I, once you select that, click on OK, and it'll show me all of the columns in there. So if I look over here under available data, data items, I'll expand that information map that we showed, and this shows me all of the columns. Now, what I see here is that anything that is categorical shows it's like a kind of a stack of papers icon. Anything that is numeric and is supposed to be used as an analysis variable shows a measurement, a, a 
measuring stick or a ruler. Okay, so these are measures and these are categories. So notice that here, even though it's a number, when we created the information map, we said we want year to be a category column and not a numeric. Because we don't really want to do a lot of um, statistics on you. We don't want to find the average year or the, the sum of the years. Um, so we're going to use year as a categorical value. All right. So we don't want all these. We just want the ones that are shown on page 2 11. This is a category, subcategory, total cases. And I'm just double clicking on these total sales, and year. And you can use the arrows to move those over. You can control click or uh, shift click to select multiples. All right, so we should end up uh, with what you see on page 2 11, which is five select items. All right, and there's other things I can do here. Sometimes you have, you might literally have, you know, 50 or 100 of these uh, columns in a particular information map. You can search for columns. You can get information on columns. All right, but I'm just going to select the ones I want, and I'm going to click on next. All right, so click that next button at the bottom. You can scroll down to get to it if you don't see it. All right, everybody with me? Now, on this wizard, notice I'm in step two of five. On this wizard screen, um, if I want, I can change the format of some of the data items. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave the default. I click on next. All right, on the next screen, I'm on screen three of five. Can you step back just a second after you put the, um, the category, subcategory to the right? What do you do? Here? Yes. I scroll down and I click on next. Okay. That's it. Yeah, you can't see. Uh, we've got our resolution set, uh, I guess, very low, which means everything is big. So, you know, depending on what your screen resolution is set to, you, you, know, you may or may not need to scroll all about here. Uh, I think we did that just so it was easier to see up here and so everybody had a consistent view. All right, so I'll click on next and next. Now that brings me here. Now what this allows me to do is to create breaks. And if I create breaks, what I'll get is a separate report for each value. So for example, let's suppose I break broke on category. There are four categories, chocolate, gummy, hard and sugar free. Those are the four types of candy. So I would literally get a separate report for each one of those types. And the other cool thing about this is it would give me links to each report automatically. So I'd almost get like a little table of contents where I could jump to chocolate, where I could jump to sugar free, and it would, it would give me those links automatically. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep things pretty simple here. So we'll specify none. I'll click on next. And we do want to make some changes here. I want a table. I want it to be, I think I want it to be a cross tab. Yeah, so I'm going to go on page 2 13. I'll make it a cross tab in the report. I'll leave all the defaults as they are. I want a graph, so I'll check the graph box. And I do want it to be a bar chart, and I'll leave those defaults as well. Okay. Any questions? Okay, quick. So all I did was click on cross tab and click on graph. I didn't change anything else. All right, click on next. Now I'm on the final step, step five of five. And here I can put in a title or a banner. Um, the banners, we do have some banners there. They're just image files. Those image files do need to be um, imported by an admin. They have to be, remember I was talking about task management console before? Well, somebody that, that has access to that can import images that could be used here. All right. Uh, I'm not going to, I mean, if you really want to see what this looks like, you can select one of those. So I'm not going to bother. I am going to type a, a title here, um, sales analysis. All right. And that's all I'm going to do there. I'm going to give it a title. I don't want to put the, and I click on finish. I'm going to type that title. Now, when I click on finish, what happens is, is I get thrown into the editor. And it doesn't really look like it's, traditional editor. Um, but this is in fact the editor. So if I didn't if I bypass the wizard completely, I would come into this editor with a blank slate. And I would it would be up to me to figure out, okay, here I want to cross tag the report object, 
here. I want a bar chart object. Notice that all my objects are showed up here. There's the cross tabular report. There's the bar chart. Here's a plot or a line graph. Um, here's a bar line and so on. So these are draggable and droppable. I can drag and drop one of these or just double or I can even click on one of them and they'll show up here. Okay? And then you have to set the properties for each one of them. I am going to add a an object a little bit later. I'm going to add a sort process object. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, but for right now, we just kind of took the shortcut and went through the wizard. So I'm going to click on the view tab and just take a look at what I have created. I should have a cross tabular report on top of a bar chart. Processing. Go out to the server here. It's running some SAS code. It's going to return the results back to my browser. And when it's eventually done, it should look like what we see on page 2 15. So there's my bar chart. That's okay. There's my tabular, my cross tabular report. That's uh, going to look that great. I'm not too happy with if you look at it closely, you can probably see the mistake we made, and that is we've got the categories in the columns, and we've got the subcategories in the rows. And they really need to be in the same dimension. They either, you know, I need to have the subcategories in the same dimension as the category. Because there is no um, dark chocolate gummy. So these, this just shows up as missing. Right? That's what happened there. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to fix that problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right mouse click here, anywhere on the report, and there's an assigned data selection. So I'll select the assigned data selection. And what I want to do is if you look at page 2-17, I want to make this look like the bottom picture on page 2-17. So up under columns, I want to have year instead of category. So what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop it. I'll, I'll grab year, I'll drag and drop that up here above category. And then I'll select category, and I'll drag and drop that down here above subcategory. Now some people don't like to drag and drop, and if you don't like to drag and drop, you can use this move item selection. So it's up to you, whichever you'd like to do. Um, drag and drop works pretty well here, so that's what I did. If you, want to get, if you want some of these not to be displayed in the report, you can move them under hidden. I'll click on OK. Everybody, everybody OK? All right, I click on OK. And this should look a little better. And it does. I don't have all that missing data now. The other thing you can do here is you can, if, if you get the, um, you know, if you move your mouse over a, you know, a, a line, you can stretch the. How did you get the years formatted right this time? That was done in the information map. So remember I said that information map kind of prepped the data for the end user. So when they created that information map, they made a four-digit year, um, no decimal. So it's not our, your, your work from yesterday. Correct. Okay. Nothing I did yesterday. Okay. Um, scroll down here and look at my bar chart. I think we want to make some changes on the bar chart too. Um, what do we want to do? We want to make it instead of a vertical bar chart. We want to make it horizontal. And we also want to give it some dimension. I think we want to make it three-dimensional cylinders. And then we also want to add the data value here. Now, if I hover over this, it tells me the data value, right, total cases. Uh, but I want to actually see it in the graph. All right, so I'm going to right mouse click here, and I'm going to go down to properties. So I'll move my mouse all the way down to properties. You just right mouse click anywhere on the bar chart, select properties, and then when you get into your properties, select the bar tab. And the bar tab allows me to change what the bars look like. All right, so you can see there's other properties you can change too, but I'm just going to go to the bar tab and make it a horizontal bar instead of a 
vertical, and I'm going to change the shape. I'm going to make it a three-dimensional cylinder. Yeah. 